Um. Centre Force Radio was used by the ICF not just to advertise their parties, but to give out false information and sabotage other people's events. Centre Force became much more than an ego trip for its backers. They quickly attracted police attention for promoting parties and the use of drugs. We are about to take you into the world of the LSD user. Police and government officials have now taken Centre Force off air five times. Transmitters were found on top of this East End tower block. But the ICF haven't quit the party business. In the end, the actual party was taken over by Centre Force Radio. Centre Force and the ICF. We've been going around telling people, if we don't get 25% of your rave, someone is going to get hurt. People have been hurt in the past, so they're giving in out of fear. The same thugs behind Centre Force carry on unchecked. They've even attacked other pirate stations. Yeah, the sound of Dance 93 FM, broadcasting live across London town. Dance is FM the is the latest now. pirate station promoting the cult music. It may be illegal, but station policy here bars any mention of parties, let alone drugs. DJs from Centre Force wanted to get away from their ICF backers and join Dance FM. That provoked revenge attacks. The person I'm waiting to meet works with pirate radio stations and knows how the ICF took revenge and warned others. Hi oh, Steve, thanks for coming to meet me. Sender Force decided to take Dance FM off air by nicking their transmitter. One person from Dance caught half a dozen of them coming downstairs with it. They went for him waving batons and Stanley knives and someone took a swing at his face with a knife. So he put his hand up to protect himself and was sliced on the finger. The DJ who runs this record shop in Walthamstow used to work for the ICF at Centre Force. When he left, he was beaten up. A crime he's too frightened to admit even happened, and it was never reported to the police. The DJ left Centre Force some time ago and then he joined Dance. So they attacked him and gave him a kick in. They smashed his shop and turned his shelves upside down. And they threatened him and said if he went back to the station, they'd be coming back. I've heard one DJ being threatened with a gun. They got everything, and they're ready to use it. The police are only beginning to find out what's going on behind the parties, but they've spared no expense to stop them. Yes, that looks a good uh, possible target. Helicopters are used to search the home counties for secret party locations. On Saturday nights, a more traditional approach is used to stop party seekers in their tracks. The roadblocks have succeeded in stopping ravers en route, but they don't help stop the real crooks. The government plans to crack down even harder on party organisers with new laws by the summer. It wants prison sentences of up to six months, fines of up to £20,000, and powers to confiscate organisers' profits. Government problem? pressure problem? which fuels a police clampdown. Our policy has been to stop these parties because they're unlicensed and because of our concerns for public order and indeed public safety. Now, as I've already said, to that end we've been successful. Yet those connected with the party business believe it's already grown too big to stop. People like Evans and Allen argue the police should target the criminal gangs, not take action against ordinary party goers or promoters. Instead of saying, right, crack down, we're going to stop it, if they got together with the promoters and sorted something out, like either later licensing hours in the clubs or something, instead of like driving it underground where you're straight back in the hands of the villains for their protection, it could change things like you could collaborate with the police and like invite the police in to see what's going on and that way like those sort of people could be kept totally out of the game. A lot of the, the organisers are all right people, they're just trying to promote a good party. It's clearly the people that they have got working for them, with them or take over their party, that's where the real trouble lies and those people are going untouched. At the moment, at the moment, but it's a case of securing the evidence. You, we cannot just walk in and arrest people at will and hope that the evidence will follow. It doesn't work that way. We have to be sure, we have to know what we're doing, 
and uh, but if until you, we're if in that you, position, we if, cannot act. If you worked with the organisers, proper organisers that you were happy with, surely then you could go in with every blessing from them and target specifically drug dealers and try and stop drug trafficking. We are involved in conventional investigation of securing that evidence, seeing witnesses, getting exhibits. That is going on. That is one of our main uh, focuses at the t this time. So the real criminals are going to be facing court action, are they, at some time in the future, not just a few party goers who've made a bit of a noise? If we can secure the evidence, and I'm sure that we will be able to in many, many cases, then we will put those people before the courts. A lot of innocent people are being locked up for it, people who are really into it for the music and not just the money and drugs aspect like what's been happening at the moment. And those type of people are suffering. If the organisers go forward and try to properly get these parties licensed, we must support them and we must police them properly and be very willing so to do. But party organisers tell a different story. Well, the main one was the objections from the police. They, These uh, organisers arrange some of the biggest unofficial outdoor parties. They want to go legal, but say they're blocked by the authorities. We have come forward. We've complied with every regulation that they have set out before us. And we are still being turned down. We are still being told to go away, and we are still not getting licences. You know, we desperately want licensed parties. Uh, if, the police, if the police were involved in the first place, it would stop out some of the... Uh, criminal element getting into this particular field. Um, but to do that, they've got to sort of give the consent to some licenses to be granted, rather than put up objections all the time. So the obstacles remain on the party trail. Police tactics that may catch music lovers in motorway service stations, but don't do anything to stop organised crime moving in on unlicensed and unsupervised parties. As long as they treat me as an outcast, and make me go underground, unfortunately I'm liable each time for the gangsters and the organised crime to come in and start taking over my operation. Despite official attention, the parties go on. In 1990, the government will continue their opposition to the licensing and proper supervision of all-night parties. So the duels with the police will continue. They may succeed in stopping a lot more parties, but will that catch the real criminals?